Welcome to the Real California Milk Snack Accelerator, powered by VentureFuel. This program taps into the $605 billion global snack food market while combining two of California's great natural resources, high quality, sustainable dairy products and the insatiable California entrepreneurial spirit. The competition aims to inspire innovation and investment in dairy-based snack products. VentureFuel is the leading corporate innovation consultancy identifying and recruiting applicants from their global innovation network of investors, founders, and academics. We saw a 153% increase in qualified applications from our first program with CMAB, which is a testament to the momentum we have been building together, as well as the opportunity in marrying snacking innovation with dairy. We saw applications from Ghana to Oakland that included personalized nutrition, functional foods, as well as unique flavor profiles inspired by cultures around the world. The purpose of this competition is to inspire new product ideas integrating the natural characteristics and nutritional profile of California milk, and this year's entries certainly delivered. In fact, when the judging committee evaluated the applications, we saw so many unique opportunities, it was clear that we needed to find a way to expand the program further. Each received a stipend and extensive group resources to help accelerate their business, including private mentor sessions with the who's who of the dairy and snacking industries. And now they meet the judges in a gauntlet of industry experts to determine who is the best of the best. And of course, their toughest competition will be each other. Welcome to the Real California Milk Snack Accelerator. Happy Veterans Day and welcome to the Real California Milk Snack Accelerator. On behalf of everyone at the California Milk Advisory Board and my team at VentureFuel, we are thrilled to have you join us for this semifinal event. It has been a true honor to help introduce new product innovations that can create more jobs, more opportunities, and more demand for California dairy. First, I'd love to tell you a little bit about the competition. This is our second product innovation competition with CMAB. We saw a 153% increase in applications from all around the world, literally Ghana to Oakland. These four companies you'll see tonight and the other 12 semifinalists have been mentored by some of the brightest executives from Nestle, Diageo, Food Network Magazine, Hershey's, Conagra, and so many other companies. Each of these semifinalists received a stipend to perfect their products, and you will see that hard work on display tonight. They've created commercials and custom pitches reworked logos and packaging, tweaked formulas and flavors, all to compete for the $200,000 first place and $100,000 second place prize. But if they've made it this far, they've already won. So let's take a quick look at the requirements. You will see a wider range of companies throughout the competition, from yogurt to ice cream to crisps. To be eligible, the companies needed to be a dairy snack, meaning they had to have 50% or more of their product be dairy, and they've committed to using 100% real California dairy should they win. Before we kick this all off, I'd love to introduce you to the CEO of CM CMAB, Mr. John Talbot. John, welcome to the show. Here, On behalf of the California Milk Advisory Board and our 1,200 dairy farm families, I'd like to welcome you all. We are extremely excited about this Snack Accelerator contest and the tremendous interest that we've seen, 76 entries in total. You know, snacking is certainly on the rise with 95% of adults snacking at least once a day. And dairy and snacking are perfect partners with many snacks benefiting from the tastes, textures, and nutritional value that dairy provides. My sincere thanks to all the participants and the judges. Best of luck. Thanks so much, John. So last night, two companies made it through to the finals, Cheese Bits and Peekaboo Ice Cream. So which of these four companies is gonna join them? How do we determine who will win this $200,000 grand prize? Well, luckily, I, I don't have to. We brought in people that are much smarter than I am to evaluate these companies. So I'd love to introduce you now to our amazing judges. So all the way from Australia, we have Nikki Jackson, uh, the CEO and founder of Range Me. After a distinguished career at Kellogg's, Pepsi, Jim Beam, Nikki founded Range Me, which is the CPG industry's product discovery platform. Uh, the 
the online platform injects efficiency and effectiveness into the new product discovery process, which results in greater assortment of products getting on shelf. I can't think of anyone better suited to decide which new products should, should and will uh, succeed at retail. So Nikki, welcome. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. And next we have Amanda Burleson. Amanda is the Senior Brand Manager of Betty Crocker and Gold Medal Flower at General Mills. Uh, my favorite line from her LinkedIn, which she doesn't know that I had stalked today, uh, is that it says, doubling dessert innovations to regain relevance. And I can't think of like a better one sentence to sum up what we're trying to do here. So Amanda, thanks for joining you, joining us. Honored to be here. Thanks for having me. And next we have Bentley King. Uh, Bentley is the director of Savory North America at Unilever. He's a seasoned brand marketer and general manager with nearly two decades of experience in the food, personal care, and spirits industry, working on bands like Noor, Hellman's, Dove, Degree Deodorant, and Smirnoff. Bentley, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. It's going to be fun. Bob Carroll. Bob is the VP of Business Development for CMAB. He is leading a team promoting products made with real California milk throughout the U.S., Mexico, and nine Asian countries. Previously, Bob served as the International Business Director for Blue Diamond Growers and worked in brand management for Kraft Foods. He also holds a Bachelor of Science degree in economics from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and proudly served in the U.S. Army. Bob, happy Veterans Day, and thank you for your service and for joining us tonight. Thank you, Fred. It's great to be here. Super excited. All right, so let, let's take a minute and, and show everyone how this is gonna work. Let's take a look at the agenda first. So each company is gonna show a 30 second video that they created just for this competition. Then there'll be a quick five minute pitch where they walk you through their presentation deck, their business metrics, and then we'll have a Q and A of about eight minutes with these esteemed judges that you just met. Let's look at the judging criteria, how they're gonna evaluate who wins. Our judges are gonna be asked to evaluate based on uniqueness. This is a product innovation competition. So what is special about this? How's it gonna break through? Taste, right? It's food, it's gotta taste awesome. Viability and scale, which is looking at, is this a business that can grow uh, and really become something interesting in the marketplace? And lastly, their founding team. Are these the right founders to get it from here to where it needs to go? At the end, our judges are gonna stack rank the companies um, from one to four. And also we've partnered with a consumer research company named Percy, which has facilitated a fan vote of over 500 consumers who will be telling us which of these companies they would put in their shopping basket. We'll announce the winner tonight at the end of the broadcast. So all this is gonna go fast and furious and we'll know who's moving on to the finals in just a few minutes. So let's get right to the show here. Our first company presenting is Zach Foods or Organic Paneer with their founder, Tarush. My name is Sarush. I am the co-founder of Satch Foods. Super excited to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. We are building a grab-and-go cheese snack product. It's made with paneer cheese. Super delicious, nutritious, and high quality. Why now? So the cheese snacking business is actually a big market. It's about $1.5 billion in revenue, and it's growing. And consumers want natural, high-protein, clean keto options. And paneer is a great choice. It checks all those boxes. Now, uh, paneer is a niche product today, yes. Uh, however, you know, kombucha, hummus, these are products that were niche not too long ago and they've gone from scale. You know, paneer's awareness is relatively low in the US today. And halloumi, uh, a similar product in Europe, has gone from being niche to scale in, in, in the recent past. We think paneer can do the same. Here's what the competition look like, looks like. So on the left, you'll see some images of existing snack products. On the right, you'll see our product. Um, see the example of our packaging, beautiful, it's vibrant colors. We call out the nutrition like protein, keto, the fact that it's just got three ingredients uh, right at the forefront. I think consumers care about these things. We're innovating within an established category, and that's got tremendous advantage in terms of you know, retail at least, when we know where to sell, who to sell to, and consumers know where to find us on the shelves. 
Uh, when it comes to product development principles, there are six principles we really, really care about. So one's great taste. We always starts with great taste. Uh, our products are organic. We care about animals. Uh, we care about how they're treated. They have to be grass-fed. It's very, very important to us. Um, the product has clean ingredients. So, you know, all these ingredients are natural. Consumers know what they are. They know how to pronounce them. Um, they're not built in the lab. Our products support a variety of different lifestyles. As you saw in the video, we support um, our product really caters to busy professionals and kids. Um, the product has uh, high protein and it's keto. Here's an example of what the nutrition look like. As you can see, it's super clean, high protein, low carb, uh, great fat, keeps you full. But you know, here's the most interesting thing. We try to look at paneer and, and compare it to the nutritionals of some existing popular snacking items today. So we looked at Thomas, we looked at Kind Bar, we looked at peanut butter, we looked at Perfect Bar. And, and, and here's what we find. You know, Paneer's actually got more protein than most of them. It's got lower sugar, less carbs, and higher, and higher in fat. So it makes it a very competitive product. Uh, here's our creative flavors. So, you know, we are the world's first flavored paneer company. No one's done this before. No one's come up with these interesting flavors of cheese before. And I think, uh, you know, consumers love it. Cons this is going to make our product more accessible to con consumers across the nation, across the world, actually. Um, and we are super excited. Uh, ingredients matter. So, you know, all our ingredients that we pick are have to stick by these core principles. They have to be natural. They have to be highly nutritious. They have to be on trend. You know, Starbucks uh, makes turmeric latte. Uh, they have to be innovative. So we have an eye on the future and what's going to be interesting in the future. Um, and they have to be 100% organic. Here's a quick background on us. Uh, on the team, it's me and my wife, Jazz. Uh, we both are in technology, uh, or at least have a background in technology. Uh, we do partnerships, finance, and product development. We are relentless entrepreneurs. And we start from a concept in the kitchen to having a product in less uh, in, having a live product in less than a year and we are in about 200 stores in one year um, we relate so we are vegetarians we had our own problem to solve it we know who the consumers are because we are the consumers we are millennials we're going after the millennial consumer base but more important than everything and anything else is we have a long-term view on our business we are building the foundations of um, of a brand strategic partnerships across retail across distribution and, and here's what i mean you know, we think Prodini is a very nutritious product and it's interesting because you can make a bunch of derivative products out of paneer and so we have the core six times product in the market today we are building on the snack product next we have future products in mind in the roadmap uh, and and i think uh, it's an amazing opportunity and, and, and the best part of it is organic milk is actually 90 percent of most of these ingredients so the more products we make the more scale we have the better margins we'll have and the more we can help support dairy industry and dairy farmers you know and we'll leverage our existing channels and distribution networks to get to market uh, here's what i mean by that so we have uh, our distribution strategy in five different buckets strategic retail d2c meal kits food service grab and go we are already in three of these uh, markets or these channels i think getting the snack product can get to help us get to all of them here's a partner network uh we partner with the best retailers the best distributors uh, nationwide uh, very strategic and and so we've uh, have this network as established and we can leverage our margins so we are about 40 percent margin right now but i think adding a snack product can actually help us get to 50 percent or more uh, example of a growth trajectory from our first custom customer in 2019 september 2019 to us being about 200 stores in uh, fall of this year and we expect to be at 500 stores in early q1 Here's an example of how we market the product as a snacking product. Uh, no one's do, doing this in the, in, the, in the category today. Here's an example of our reviews, uh, partnerships with uh, strategic influencers, and the press that we've gotten so far. Thank you so much. Awesome job. Let's let's bring in Tarush and the judges, and I. Nikki, we're going to start with you. I'm not sure how hot paneer is over in Australia. I know you're always bouncing back and forth, but we're, we're going to let you uh, kick off the uh, questioning. Well, just to clarify, while in Australia, I represent RangeMe, which is an American-based discovery platform with over 200,000 products in it. And I have to say, when I was looking at your packaging and your concept, um, I was very um, intrigued. Um, you're definitely hitting all the right points in terms of all your claims and and your audience. Um, and um, you answered a lot of my questions actually in that pitch. So really, really great job, well done. And I, my, my big question to you guys is in terms of scaling, scaling this, in terms of how you produce it, how you're gonna scale, I know you've got a finite distribution now, but as this becomes more of the hummus of the industry, as you said, or something which is more 
widely spread. How do you plan to scale um, your production and your outreach um, moving forward? Yeah, thank you, Nikki, for the question. Um, that's a great question. So a couple of things. In terms of production, we have a couple of uh, production partners lined up. Um, like they both combined can have a massive scale. They are some of the biggest cheese producers in the country today. Um, and so I think uh, from a production standpoint, we are pretty well set and established. Yep. In terms of distribution, we, uh, we are working with some of the top retailers in the US today, as we kind of showed in the slide. We are reaching nationwide consumers in two days shipping. Um, so we already have that established and we've been doing that pre-pandemic. Uh, so I think we're in a pretty good, pretty good position to kind of scale, but we want to scale responsibly. You know, we uh, have a relationship with each of the stores. We know the buyers. We've Jazz and I have kind of done the demos before before the pandemic, and now we meet the buyers, make sure con the consumers know where to find the product, they know our product, uh, and you know take it st one step at a time. Yes, exactly. And the focus is around you know you know the buyers, you know the retailers now, but as you scale, you'll have to let go of that. Um, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see um, who you partner with and how how you effectively do that and also what channel you choose. Um, I was interested in all your different channels, um, you know, grab and go at a Starbucks versus a Whole Foods. And it'd be interesting to watch that grow and change as you, as you increase your distribution. Absolutely. Great, Amanda, let's, let's turn to you. <clears throat> yeah, hi, nice to meet you. Great job on your pitching. Um, I So I love Indian food. I'm a big paneer fan. I am mostly vegetarian, so I'm very familiar with paneer. And I found it interesting that um, in the samples that we received, the, the real headline is protein cheese. And then on some of the um, imagery you were showing, paneer was really the forward descriptor. So I'm curious on how you weigh the two. I think paneer is really the differentiator from some of the competitors in the like string cheese, snackable cheese section, but probably not as familiar to the average American. So curious how you um, kind of weighed those trade-offs. Yeah, um, good question, Amanda. I think it's, first of all, just to add, like, it's not, we haven't decided on the name yet. Uh, we're still working on, you know, uh, between the two options, the pros and cons both ways, uh, as you mentioned, like, and uh, I think you're still deciding. And, you know, if you have any feedback, we'd love to take that. Uh, we do have a trademark on our brand and, there's advantages, advantages of using paneer because that differentiates us. But then if you go to the middle of the country, maybe you consumers don't know paneer as much. So, you know, I think that's what we are kind of testing right now. Uh, and, and I guess I'll just add one more thing. We are including our snack packages to a direct consumer audience today. Uh, we're starting to do that to get some feedback from them directly. So it's much faster, much more nimble. Um, and then we incorporating that in our, in our future, plan, future plans. Mm -hmm. My, my advice is always um, know the consumer you're targeting and test your way there. So what is your, you know, what is your hypothesis and go test it and talk to people and see what they think. Um, so, but it is definitely one of your key challenges, I think, on how to talk about the product and the, the benefits and the differentiation. Great. Uh, Bentley. Hey, Tarush, uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, really well done. Kudos to, um, to the two of you for uh, for starting this journey, it's, it seems like you guys are well on your way. Um, I uh, I was really impressed, uh, like uh, like Nikki and Amanda, on um, just overall look and feel out of the gates. Um, clearly, you're going after the functional food space, and uh, your claims game, shall I say, is very strong. Um, I, it's very clear that that's sort of a, a key part of. Um, educating consumers on sort of the benefits and understanding the sort of the health benefits. Um, I, I, I couldn't help but think about the benefit of being of a white space is uh, that it's not a cluttered market today, but, um, but surely you hope it to be. In fact, it actually would be a, to your benefit if um, overall awareness, overall usage, overall consumption of paneer will, will, will rise, right? Because um, that, that's the sort of the first mover advantage, if you will. Um, I guess the question I'd have is, um, beyond what I would say, things like look and feel, aesthetics, uh, and some of the functional elements, you know, how do you how do you guys see yourself insulating uh, the business, the company, the brand uh, from uh, some of your competition? Because surely they'll be uh, right on your heels. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's, that's a golden question. <laughs> I, I think, you know, honestly, it's our story, it's our branding, uh, it's 
know, we are first generation entrepreneurs, first generation immigrants. Uh, you know, we started our product in the kitchen, literally with no tools. We self-funded. Uh, we've gotten our product from the kitchen to 200 stores, as we mentioned. And all the, and, and you all, all of you on the call know how what it, what it means to do that. Uh, so we've kind of done that. We talked to our consumers about that. And I think as long as we stay, uh, stay true to our principles um, and we make a great quality product, we communicate to the, to the consumers, you know, I think that will be our biggest differentiator. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's uh, in food, it's kind of hard to really protect your recipe, uh, but I think it's, it's important to protect your brand and your story. And I, and I think that would be the number one differentiator for us. I think the second thing is our alliances and our partnerships. Uh, we think we can't do it alone. We've partnered with some of the great uh, retailers and, and also we're working with top tier chefs around the country. We had a couple of big partners in San Francisco pre, pre, pre COVID uh, where they were using our product in, in, uh, in their menus. And I think those alliances will give us a very long lasting impact and a long lasting advantage over, over competition. Great stuff. Great. All right, Bob. Well, I absolutely love the product as well. So great job overall, Jerush. I have a question really around your consumer target. And if we think about it from the perspective of consumers who are, are buying Paneer now versus kind of what you showed in the video of that broader market of, of snacking and snacking cheese, you know, it seems like your target is the broader snacking market, but what do you see as the challenges of, of gaining and, and kind of building trial with those consumers in the broader snack market? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, awareness, like understanding what like the benefits of Paneer and communicating that to users who don't, con you know, currently use Paneer as a snacking option. Um, I think that awareness is going to be key. Like, how do you educate them? How do you find them? How do you educate them? Uh, and I think that those are going to be our bigger challenges. And you know, I think one thing we'll add is we are the first company to do flavored paneer. It was a, wasn't a concept. It is in the concept, and we've been able to do that. We've been able to get into retail. It's taken a lot of effort and a lot of failures, to be honest, uh, to get here. Uh, but I think I think that's our path. Like we try, we communicate, we become innovative in terms of how we market. We we use different use cases uh, and, and get to consumers directly online. And uh, I think that that's going to be our, our, our way in. Uh, and when when we can do demos in the future. Uh, I think getting in front of the consumer and showcasing your product is no better way. Uh, I think we, we were able to do that on a limited scale, of course, but we'll figure out a way to get that, you know, make it more scalable. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thanks so much uh, to SAC Foods uh, with their flavored paneer. Uh, now we are gonna go uh, to our second contestant of the night, uh, Lucy Protein Crisps with founder Daniel Trailer. Going towards the light at the end of the tunnel is not always easy. That feeling of persevering makes the busy days, the struggle, and the pain worth it. The essential workers who can't work from home. You hear the cheers from windows for healthcare workers. Our high quality snack contains a blend of enhanced real California milk and vitamin D determined to protect you. Lucy challenges today's snack market and is specifically designed to deal with today's challenges. You are worth it. Hello, my name is Daniel Trailer, and I'm the founder of a new product that I'll share with you today. There is a white space in today's snacking market, allowing the opportunity for new products to get on the shelves and thrive. In 2019, Mintel reported that 95% of Americans ate snacks at least once a day, and 70% of Americans ate snacks twice a day. With novel lifestyle changes due to COVID-19, we expected to see something different. The at-home market is boosted by multitudes of lockdown home workers and families turning to snacks. Undoubtedly, today's challenges shook up the world and consumers' meal occasions. The total available market for snacks in the United States is more than $27 billion in annual sales. The global snack market is expected to increase at a CAGR of 5.34% and the savory snacks category poised to grow at a rate of 5.6% by 2024. According to the MPD group, snack food consumption increased by over 8% during the height of COVID, with 4% more snacking occasions occurring. 
The savory snack category alone is projected to reach $109 billion in global sales by 2025. This savory snack category exploded over the last few years, focusing on protein snacks for the more mainstream consumers. The health-conscious consumer is driving the increase in sales to over $13.6 billion for sports nutrition products. 82% of global sales are for sports protein products. Our hyper healthcare target consumer would routinely purchase sports nutrition products to increase their protein intake. This shift in consciousness has resulted in indulgent savory snacks such as chips, puffs, or crisps as the new high protein alternative meal replacement option. Here are some high protein snacks that our target market would typically buy, but there still remains a gap for science backed products and snacking. Lucy Protein Crisp with Leucine combine airy crisp of real California milk, vegetable proteins, vitamin D, and a unique essential amino acid called leucine to form a delightfully crispy snack that contributes to healthy muscle mass now and in the future. Lucy is a snack food that can be consumed anywhere and anytime for breakfast, lunch, or for dinner purposes. Of all the essential amino acids that you must consume daily to stay healthy, leucine appears to be the most potent in activating muscle growth. Consuming high quality proteins enhanced with dietary leucine and vitamin D causes a little bit of protein to act like consuming a large amount of protein. Therefore, less can be more. So I decided to study at McMaster University the proof of concept for enhanced protein formulations using leucine and vitamin D. Our skeletal muscles are the key to healthy aging but are considered by the scientific community to be neglected. Here is why. As we age, our skeletal muscle mass and muscular strength slowly decline. We know that as early as our fourth decade of life, our muscles become less sensitive to the effects of eating high quality proteins. Thus, one must eat more protein to robustly stimulate muscle growth. Coupled with an injury or sickness, increases the risk of falls and fractures, dependent living, and leads to premature disability. My original research was funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health in the Applied Sciences for Lucy Style Products. Our results indicated that the remarkable combination of leucine and vitamin D and smaller amounts of high quality milk proteins improved muscle growth rates during a short term exercise program. So have a snack now. Be ready then. Our team consists of myself and a co-founder in product solutions research. Our branding team is the creative pack and we like to engage the marketing greenhouse. Our manufacturer is Pure Nature Foods located in Woodland, California. We would also consider working with Pod Foods and fantastic stores like Bristol Farms. There is a white space in today's snacking market. The Lucy brand will bring forth new innovations and job opportunities in California using substantial amounts of real California milk. Placing in this year's Snack Accelerator competition will help us commercialize Lucy around the world. Thank you. Great job, Daniel. Uh, so why don't we bring Daniel in uh, as well as the judges. And Amanda, I don't know if you're familiar with leucine, but I'm, I'm going to kick it off with you. So why don't you start? Um, I am not familiar with it. I am very familiar with lots of good food. So what I will say is I loved the texture and flavor um, of your product. So I, I was really pleasantly surprised by the complex taste and like good amount of spice and flavorful in general. Um, so all of that was great. I, one thing, a question that I have is you use a lot of um, technology and science-based benefits and communication, um, including leucine and the benefits of leucine and some of the other protein-based um, claims. I'm curious, do you, what is your level of um, familiarity with regulatory requirements, um, regulatory process, as you go to make claims like this, um, there certainly will be muddy waters ahead on um, getting approval and talking about some of those benefits, just knowing some of the struggles I often have with our regulatory folks and lawyers. Um, I'm curious, kind of, do you have an expert in that space to tap into, or how are you thinking about um, sort of validating or pressure testing some of those claims? 
Yes, Amanda, great question. Um, yeah, well, I'm working with product solutions research with Dr. Sangeeta Patel. She's my uh, partner and co-founder. Um, so PSR is qualified as a toxicology site. So we do a lot of studies on the toxicology of different food products. Um, uh, so it, from that perspective, the claims that we're speaking about with leucine, um, we, we would not add that to the protein claim. It is it's the story behind the science. So we wouldn't say that leucine is a part of the protein. It's just the part of the special sauce. So we would have this tested um, at PSR. We would write a grass report. Um, I've done several of those with Dr. Patel. So it would be, we would be qualified through, through those channels. Awesome. Yeah, I would, I would think it's important for you to have an expert in that space as you navigate what, what you can say and what you can't to stay, um, stay kosher with the FDA. Yes, and, and the, the upper limits for dietary leucine uh, were well within the limits. Uh, for instance, someone would have to eat about 35 to 40 packs of leucine to have a adverse event from the leucine. So uh, it's very clear. Um, it's very small amounts, but within a specific ratio, that's the key. Uh, if the ratio is off, the leucine won't work effectively to stimulate muscle growth. Awesome. I feel smarter. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Mr. Savory himself, Bentley King. Uh, how you doing, Daniel? Nice to meet you. Um, congrats on, um, on on a great product. I, I, I also, you know, have to say that the first, you know, uh, first time I tasted this, I was uh, really surprised or pleasantly surprised, I would say, by the complexity of the the flavor profile. It was, um, it, it was really, uh, you know, to say bold is is really maybe just an understatement. So, I think um, the question I'd have for you, and and maybe after listening to, um, kind of to the to the pitch, if you will is uh, how you see the, uh, the current, the target audience uh, today, and, and more importantly, how do you see the target audience tomorrow? So um, a, a, a large part of this proposition is ultimately um, you know, the, the ability to grow and expand. And I, I, you know, I, it, it's, it, you know, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but it, it, certainly there's a very heavily science-driven um, uh, sort of underpinning to the proposition so I, I, I'd be curious if you could under, if you could sort of articulate a bit of like who who exactly is that target consumer today, uh, and then ultimately maybe a bit of uh, how you, you plan to expand that consumer base. Yeah, Bentley, great question. Our target market is the hyper healthcare uh, consumer, uh, so it's really interesting what we're doing here. We're leaning towards females with Lucy as of right now. Um, and that I could go into the packaging later, but that there's a specific purpose for that. Now I can answer this question to uh, coming from two different perspectives. I'll first come at it from my expertise as a scientist. Uh, we know that the national health and nutrition examinations and surveys, the NHANES data that's produced by the center of disease control, the CDC, uh, they have put out data on uh, equality and diversity in healthcare. And those studies are showing that sarcopenia, the prevalence of sarcopenia in, in sarco, sarcopenia means sarc is Greek for muscle and pina, lack of. So the age-related loss of muscle mass as we reach about 40 years old, it starts to taper down. But we know that those prevalence rates differ between uh, ethnicities and race and advancing age. Among the sex and the age groups, Hispanic females had the highest prevalence for sarcopenia and sarcopenic obesity. So from a scientific perspective, um, females are underrepresented within our sample sizes. If you look at the protein metabolomic data that we look at, these studies are mainly male. So from that perspective, we want to get this out to female consumers. It was funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health. So it is our, it's the, it's our responsibility to lean towards females. Now, that being said, uh, we, uh, we have flexibility to, to reach out to other demographics. But for right now, we think that uh, there, well, we know that there's a growing number of women that are seeking savory style snacks. Um, and particularly, this is a cost um, alternative or time alternative to uh, a meal uh, or between meals. 
So we feel confident that we will be able to get this message out to our target consumer. The hyper healthcare target consumer would typically go to sports nutrition products as, as you saw in the, in the presentation. So it, that's where they're going towards. These individuals- Great, Daniel, we're, we're gonna have to yes. stop you there just to keep it going. So uh, Bob, I'm, I'm gonna jump, jump over to you. Yeah, so Daniel, I too really like the product, the crunch and the texture especially were really good. I, I wanna kind of follow on with what you were just talking about, but with the hyper healthcare consumer you're talking about, where are they? How do you reach them? And can you in 90 seconds roughly Tell, give me a summary of your sales strategy to get this product into distribution so those people can buy it. Yes, uh, these, these individuals are usually going to be shopping at your GNCs, some of your um, health food outlet stores. Um, our sales strategy, I, I feel very confident that we, what we have, uh, working with uh, the creative pack to build out our branding, working with the marketing greenhouse, and uh, with Pure Nature Foods, um, has 90 years of experience in the industry and in, in, in manufacturing. Uh, and so working with these groups who have established products already on the shelves, uh, I can't say, I presented some of those, but uh, our partners have these capabilities for us to get there. We would do promotionals, um, we would do TRP coupons, uh, demos. I think working with stores like Bristol Farms, uh, which was amazing, uh, mentorship that we uh, we had joint we had received from the competition. Working with Bristol Farms, those kind of stores, that's where our target our hyper healthcare target consumer is going to be. Great. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Last question. Awesome. Um, well done, Daniel. I love the I love the name. I love the packaging. I love that you're also, I guess, trying to target a different audience to the typical male, um, I guess, weightlifting audience of who a lot of the GNC or bodybuilding type products, protein products are targeted towards. I'm interested in the founding team and your team specifically. I noticed when you put that chart up, it was you and then you outsource a lot of your, um, your, I guess, design, marketing and everything else, which I think is very smart, particularly in the early stages as you scale. Um, how many in your, in your team are there like you? And also what, what led you to Lucy? Is your background in is a science background? Are you an entrepreneur? What, what's what's your background, and what makes it what makes you um, the person that's going to actually drive this product forward to you know mass distribution and potential acquisition one day? Yes, Nikki, excellent question. Uh, so I'm working. My partner is Dr. Sangita Patel. Um, she has been in the food industry for a very long time. And working at Product Solutions Research allows us the capability to uh, make these products with the food science and then with myself having the science background. So it's a very strong link between myself and PSR. Now, my background is in the sciences, but I am also an entrepreneur. Um, I've been working on Lucy uh, R&D, I'd say, uh, for about 10 years. I've been studying it at McMaster for four years. Um, so I can tell you this, that there are very there are no products out there that are doing in the snack industry that is are doing what Lucy does. And the reason for that is that it was only until 2012 that the first studies were published on using enhanced uh, proteins, milk proteins with dietary leucine. That only came out in 2012. Uh, around that time, I was already developing this, and that's how I ended up at McMaster University where they're studying that. So I have two human clinical trials on these Lucy style formulations. I have a patent pending in the United States right now. Uh, so right, Daniel, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we're, we're over time. Thank you so much. Uh, Very passionate. I love the passion. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the passion's awesome. Nothing, nothing hurts me more than to cut off a founder as they're talking. Uh, but we're going to keep it rolling for everybody. Uh, we've got our third uh, contestant tonight. It's Way Cool Kitchen, which is an amazing name, uh, and their Curd Cup with founder Lynn Stray and Jill Bosch. Life is sweaty, but you need to recharge. Life is stressful, but you need the strength to go back in. Life is hectic, but you still need to enjoy recess. When life needs a boost, grab a Curd Cup. This cottage cheese is full of crunchy, savory flavor. 
It has 19 grams of protein, no added sugar, and is made from perfectly wholesome California milk. Way Cool Kitchen's Curd Cup, the go-to snack that fuels you up. Not your grandma's cottage cheese. Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Jill. And we are co-founders of the Way Cool Kitchen, and we want to welcome you inside. So what are we? We are home to perfectly wholesome California milk products. And ultimately, our belief is that clean eating, it's not a trend, it's a lifestyle. So today we're introducing the curd cup. And what's the base of the curd cup? California cottage cheese. It's organic, small curd, all natural, and full of milky flavor. We really believe that cottage cheese is making a comeback. What makes our cottage cheese different? It's the crunch toppings. We've got smoky adobo crunch, and we've got everything bagel. They're on trend, they're globally inspired, and they really make up for kind of one of the things that people don't like about cottage cheese, the texture. But guess what? It's also good for you. And there's lots of flavor attributes here, lots of health benefits. I just want to point out no added sugar and high in protein. Those are the two benefits that we're going to really play up in all of the marketing. It's what people are looking for in grab and go hybrid snacks. And again, it's organic and full of California milk. Most importantly, though, it's convenient and fun. We really listen to the snack task here. It's got a spoon built into the top. We've got the pourable crunch. You can decide how much you want, how little you want, and it just makes it interactive. It makes it great for the target audience. We've got athletes after workouts. We've got chefs that want to cook with it. We've got busy professionals that have five minutes for a break um, before they get back to work. And we've got busy moms on the go. But we're not just the curd cup. No, we are California Dairy. We are a third generation dairy family since 1959 in Point Reyes, um, Northern California. And we also produce award-winning artisan cheeses. We started putting milk in the vat in 2000, so 20 years later, we have eight cheeses, 15 SKUs. We're selling over um, 2 million pounds of cheese a year. Um, it's all under our brand Point Race Farmstead. And my sisters and I um, were certified women to own um, this year, which helps with our customers for diversified spending. We also have two um, creameries, two plants, and a distribution center in Petaluma. But our real strength is about our employees, because 20 years later, we have um, we have our cheese makers, a team of cheese makers, we have quality assurance, and a national sales and marketing team to launch a product. Here's an example of our points of distribution. We have distributors throughout the United States as well as exporting customers. Here's an example of some of our retailers, as you can see, A, B, and C in club stores. We're going to take this curd cup to all of our current buyers, which we have close relationships with. And But we're not just going to take it to them, we're going to take the curd to the people the curd cup to the people. And we're going to go with vending machines to college campuses, to corporate offices. We're going to take small little refrigerators to hotel lobbies and employee break rooms, as well as that cute little bike there. We're going to take it to athletic and music events. And so we're going to make sure to get it to everybody, as well as we're going to live on social media with recipes. And we're just going to engage with our customers all the time. But let's talk about cottage cheese. Why did we pick cottage cheese? Well, the whole category is $1 billion in sales. But I wanted to emphasize our segment, which is the organic segment. And this pie chart shows you that four brands really um, capture that whole market. And the good culture is that 77% there. That's who I want to talk about right now. This company was only established four years ago. They're up to $22 million in sales. They have disrupted this market. And they're from Wisconsin. That's where they make their cottage cheese. So we want to give them a little competition. We think there's room for the Wakel Kitchen Curd Cup. But let's talk about pricing. It's a win-win. We're going to make this affordable to our customers at $299 um, SRP per unit with a $249 on a um, promo price. And it's profitable for producers like us because we know the dairy business. And we've launched products before. So we're expecting a 30% profit margin, and that's including our COGS, spoilage allowance, marketing, and broker fees to make sure that we do it right. But why are we here today? We're here to show you that we can increase the demand for milk in California. So here's um, our projections for our sales. So after year one, we're going to hit $2 million. Up to, all the way up to year five, we're going to get up to $15 million in sales, which translates to over 10 million pounds of milk that we'll use for California. 
So we just want to say thanks for taking the time to enjoy our curd cup and know that this is not your grandmother's cottage cheese. So thanks so much. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Bye. Lynn and Jill, they're, they're taking the curd to the people. Let's let's bring them in. Uh, and, and Bentley, let's let's start with you. Let's see if you think this is way cool. <laughs> I'm sure you've never heard that joke before. Um, oh, Lynn and Jill, really nice to <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Nice well, it's really nice to hear you, to, to, to hear from you guys, and, uh, and congratulations. We love the, we love hearing about the the, um, the 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 family business, the sort of the sort of how you live and breathe, um, you know, um, the industry really, uh, in, in in every aspect of it. And I I think that the uh, it, the product itself, I, I have to say, it was uh, one of the more interesting ones when I got it. But I think the fact that there's an existing behavior that you were tapping into, I really love that. You know, it's. Um, uh, as a marketer, it's always hard to kind of create some a, a new behavior from scratch. I have to say, uh, and and you guys are clearly uh, leveraging uh, a, a behavior that's uh, well entrenched, shall we say, with the within the within the market. Um, I guess the question I have for you, and maybe just to hear a little bit more, is um, uh, I think it was really interesting to see two things. One is your distribution breadth today. And then the second one is um, your view of the market uh, and sort of the, the pie chart that I think you showed toward the end. Um, specifically, uh, uh, I wanted to ask a little bit, and, and clearly the distribution is going to be to your advantage uh, in terms of getting a product out there. It's, uh, it, gives you, it gives you an extra head start, shall we say. On, on, the, uh, on the competitive front, it's one where, um, again, because you're tapping into an existing behavior and because you're basically – um, you know, your differentiator is, is off of uh, cottage cheese and sort of the benefits of cottage cheese. I wanted to see how you were going to take it not only to the people, but take it to good culture, take it to your competitor. And, and ultimately, how do you um, uh, ultimately, I mean, if, this, if, it's, if you are seeing it as a share game, a game and uh, looking to sort of take a bite out of their, that big, massive uh, piece of the pie, how are you going to do that? Uh, because ultimately, the, uh, the product itself is uh, at the core, uh, really, really the benefits of cottage cheese. Right. Well, we see that the overall cottage cheese market um, is somewhat stable. It's not growing a lot, but the organic segment has grown. That's what we've shown with good culture. And so there is room to grow that even more. And especially when we're talking about the younger demographics, um, that they're eating healthier. They're looking for you know high protein. They're looking for something that's clean and wholesome. So um, and then of course we're capturing people who have always loved cottage cheese, but we're going to deliver it in a new way. Yeah, I was just going to say a, a key differentiator is this savory crunch topping that really tastes good. You know, right now we have two flavors we're launching with, um, but we have a slew of others behind it, um, all globally inspired, really on trend with the younger generation. That's going to kind of help attract people into. Um, the product and, and to want to try it in the first place. Um, and it's going to really stand out on the dairy wall compared to other cottage cheeses that are all either plain or only have sweet, uh, mostly fruit and sugar laden um, ver flavor versions. Um, and we think that just the packaging itself, because it's grab and go, because it's an alternative to grabbing a protein bar or a yogurt when you when you want that quick pick me up as a as a protein snack, it's going to just speak to all the, all different demographics. But to your question about distribution, this has been a fun area for us to kind of think outside the box and look mm -hmm. for alternative venues. So um, as you were saying, we have a little bit of an edge with um, our current distribution and partnerships, but also we've always believed in um, having relationships with the end customer. So we work with a lot of the hotel chains as well. So once again, trying to get into that market and all those hotel refrigerators, you know, we work with Google's, all the corporate campuses here locally as well. Um, so not just working with our distributors, but there will definitely be some avenues where it will be a blend that will go directly to the end customer. We work directly with Trader Joe's, directly with Costco. So it'll be a blend between distributors and then also going to other avenues that would not typically, you would see it um, showing up besides just a conventional retail store. Also looking really for okay, branded great. Sorry, guys. We're going to have to keep moving here. We only have a little question in so far. Uh, Bob, I'm going to turn to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Lynn and Jill, the product was fantastic. I absolutely love the idea of the mix-in, and, and the ones that you've created so far are fantastic. They taste great. 
They add a great texture to cottage cheese and there is a resurgence in cottage cheese now. So yeah. I think that there's a lot of great things going here. I want to kind of zero back in on the, the organic a little bit and the share goal that you have. If I got the numbers right, and I could be wrong because it went by a little fast, it looks like based on the size of the organic business, if it stayed flat over the next five years, you would need to achieve about a 50% market share to achieve that volume goal. Is that right? Or am I kind of missing something there? It seemed I, like I it was a, a... Yeah, I don't think the organic sector is going to stay flat. I was saying that traditional cottage cheese and the conventional um, packaging in the 16 ounce Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the conventional, um, make of cottage cheese. There's a lot that have additives. This is very, a clean recipe that we're going to, um, wanting to put on the shelf. And also there's not many that are in the individual grab and go. So we feel that that organic segment has a lot of room to grow. It's only mm -hmm. 27 million out of a billion dollar category. So. Excellent. Do you have growth projections for the next five years for the organic segment that you're estimating? For the overall organic segment? No, not for the yeah. overall organic segment, but we feel that we can um, definitely. Cheese. Oh, in cottage cheese. That's what I mean. Yes, we don't have yeah. for the, I don't have those statistics um, with me right now, but we do feel that if um, good culture could do that in four years, that there's more and more consumers out there. And we have such a broad range of our um, demographics that we're trying to reach. And in these different avenues of getting in front of them, we feel that we could be as successful. And there's, there's just, it's just, they've proven that there's room for more. I think also we're just Great. really quick, we're trying to expand beyond just the existing cottage cheese uh, consumer. Great. We really want to create new markets and new audiences. Great. Great. Well, that's a good lead in. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, firstly, well done, Lynn and Jill. Um, awesome pitch and fantastic to see um, woman owned businesses out there. So I absolutely love that. And um, obviously, you, you have a successful um, business that you can ride this one on top of um, in terms of your existing relationships, which, which is amazing. Um, and you were talking before about broad range demographics. And I think that um, when you're thinking about something which is, you said, not your grandmother's cottage cheese, it's something which people mm -hmm. traditionally associate with the older generation and you're trying to target an on-the-go snacking occasion with millennials or people that want protein, healthy food, it is quite difficult to, to get that change of behavior or get that trial when some people may, are you going after existing mm -hmm. cottage cheese eaters or are you going after people that actually don't eat cottage cheese? Because it is, I mean, when I tasted it, it was absolutely delicious, but I don't necessarily like cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't necessarily go for that. Um, I would have loved it with a cream cheese spread on a piece of toast. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. when I tasted it, I was surprised and delighted. So like, are you going, how are you going to focus your efforts on really getting that new usage occasion, that new consumer, um, which is quite expensive to do. And it, it, it takes a lot of single focus and targeting versus, you know, you said you wanted a broad range demographic that often is quite crippling because you've got a limited amount of spend and a limited amount of focus. So you really want to make sure that you're going after who you truly want to get um, as your core consumer. Um, so so how are you, are, how do you? Yeah, we learned yeah, from- So how do you, how do you- yeah, sure. We learned um, from our experience in building our cheese business that the best use of our marketing dollar is getting the product sampled, is getting the product tasted yeah. by potential new consumers. So that's where we came up with this whole push-pull strategy um, where we would be bringing the curd cups to the people by being at events, being at sporting competitions, being um, on college campuses. We know that you know college kids are some of the best grassroots marketers around. We were even talking about a college-oriented ambassador program where we get the kids out there telling each other about it and helping us on social media, um, spreading the word um, about the Curd Cup. Um, and Jill, also, I'm sorry, just I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're, we're running late on time. Uh, okay. and, and Amanda, we're going to start with you first on the next question. Um, but thank you, both Lynn and Jill. That was great. Um, and then we're going to go now to our our last contestant um, of the evening, uh, which is Saga Ventures and Cheese Board Snack Bar with founder Allison Tetrick. You're the author of your own story. Whether you're an explorer, a parent, a lover of the outdoors, or a total homebody, one thing always remains true. Good stories pair well with good food. 
Made with real 100% California cheese and infused with local fruits, nuts, and spices, you can bring your own personal cheese board wherever your story takes you. As a cowgirl turned professional cyclist, wholesome, simple, real food snacks like cheese board are what keep me winning. Savor the story with cheese board. Hello, I'm Allison Tetrick, and thank you so much for the opportunity to present a product that I'm really proud of and I am confident will make a difference both in the snacking and dairy industry. My career has taken me around the world as a professional cyclist, biotechnology consultant, communications, and branding expert. Born and raised on a California cattle ranch, a free-range entrepreneur, and currently living in Petaluma because happy cows know best, has kept me deeply entrenched in agriculture and my local dairy ranches. I have worked with Got Milk and Clover Sonoma as a sponsored athlete and brand ambassador and have been featured in commercials and ad campaigns. My global experience has taught me an appreciation for investing in ourselves, our environment, and our community. And with Cheeseboard, we can do all of that and more from right here in California. So grab a snack. Let's talk. Life is too short to eat bad food, especially when it comes to cheese. Life is hard. We need fuel. And why sacrifice flavor and health because we're on the move? Why isn't there a cheese snack that is gourmet enough for the most discerning foodie to savor and portable enough to accompany any adventure? What if I want a whole cheese board, a party platter of nuts, dried fruit, and other delicious accoutrements all to myself that also fits in my pocket to enjoy and sustain me on the go? There has to be something better than string cheese. The market is flooded with cheese-like products and separated containers of basic chunks of cheese and crackers and nuts and stuff. What happened to using real ingredients you recognize and try sticking a Lunchable in your back pocket. Good luck. There is no other product like this on the market. Literally none. Shocking, I know. Can't we just have our cheese board and eat it too? Well, now you can. Enter the cheese board snacking bar. Cheese board is made with 100% California cheese and infused with the freshest ingredients of nuts, herbs, spices, and fruit. Problem solved. Your own personal cheese board. From apricot pistachio to queso fresco with mango, lime, chili, salsa, and pepitas, Cheese Board is a broad assortment of global flavors. No added sugar, pure, simple, California, and packaged in an eco-friendly individual serving. Each bar is about 200 calories and contains about 17 grams of protein. Down the road, Cheese Board will extend to party trays and snack packs, so now your Cheese Board party prep is done for you. Snack consumption is a huge market with steady growth and cheese-based snacks are forecasted to have an even larger increase over the next six years. The surge is being led by demand for gourmet and artisanal cheese and the consumer is looking for something less processed and more than what's currently available. Cheese Board delivers new flavor experiences that are diverse, savory, and multidimensional instead of just meh. And with increased health concerns towards sanitation, a gourmet, individually wrapped snack has potential to grow even further in markets, including airplane travel and my favorite wine tasting rooms. The initial focus is to target existing relationships with retail markets that have obvious alignment with Cheeseboard. We have a number of companies that I have previously worked with to launch products and activate brands who cater to our target consumer base. This focused approach that leans in on existing relationships will also allow us to grow with support at the retail level while minimizing initial distribution costs that would erode margin needed to support our continued expansion. As we grow with our retail partners as well as suppliers and producers, we will use that momentum to invest into broader markets and expand our reach. Young and old, from the corner store to the boutique market, cheese is and always will be a staple. Our target market is those searching for a real fresh food snack with innovative ingredients. Consumers who pay attention to taste, health, flavor experiences, and sustainability yet still need that convenient packaging. Even flexitarians and typically non-dairy consumers will want Cheeseboard for that protein punch. Cheeseboard will be a socially responsible brand you can trust. Cheeseboard firmly believes it is our responsibility to ensure that not only our product is packaged and produced in an environmentally conscious way, but that we also invest back into the farms, fields, and people that drive this industry forward, our natural resources. This is our focus and will also garner loyalty from our consumer base. A portion of our proceeds will go to programs that align with this mission. So how do I pull this off? It's the team. It's the people behind the product. We have a great team that will commercialize Cheeseboard and make it a household name. We are backed by an incredible group of scientists, investors, innovators, and creative genius. We have decades of experience in a broad range of industry, including agriculture, cheese making, product development, and retail distribution and we have what it takes to make cheese board a success. And yes, we are all in California. So as you pull out your next snack, think about what makes it important to you. 
Cheese board provides lasting, balanced energy to focus and adventure while absorbing the good things in life. We are writing our own story right now every day and have the power to invest in our future and eat great food along the way. Savor the story with Cheese Board. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you, Allison. Uh, why don't you join us? I love the idea of savor the story. It was such a good line. Uh, and Amanda, I apologize we didn't get to you on the last one, so I'd love to uh, start off with you uh, and, and let you fire away at Allison. Yeah, great job, Allison. Um, uh, what a what an interesting product. So I have to be honest, when I first got the sample and red cheese board, I thought it was going to be like a, a saran wrapped like cheese board, actual cheese board, like that you had in the video when you were biking. And then to see that it's actually a cheese bar um, actually to, like took me to a whole new space. And um, as you talked about distribution, you certainly had retail in your sites, grocery in your sites. And it took me to a question on where you think it will be placed in store and how you're thinking about the benefit of snacking um, versus the known category of cheese and sort of this artisanal cheese board millennial space that um, you're, you're kind of in, but not because of snacking. Just kind of thought about um, shelf placement and where you think about yourself uh, in the store once you're able to gain distribution. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I appreciate the question, and I'm, I didn't mean to throw you for a loop, but it, the product doesn't exist, so it is, it is um, <laughs> definitely unique where it's going to be placed in the market. I think we know very well what this target market is, and, and you probably all would agree with me. And it can end up, I mean, in a retail space, if you're looking at a Pete's Coffee, which I have a very close relationship, or Equator Coffee in a refrigerated section, that's easy, you know, the grab-and-go snacks. Um, now into more of the markets, franchise outlets. I have two options. I would like to do product research um, to figure out we get it in the right spot. But I'm thinking it as an end cap in the um, champagne, uh, wine, like wine in a can and next to the charcuterie. So you see those meat and cheese sticks, you see the grab and go refrigerated snacks. But I also could see it living quite nicely in a cheese island where you see the baby bells or something like that at a safe way where you are also looking for cheese. Um, my team and I will make sure we slot it in the right spot, but I think the good thing is there's options that where we can reach the market where somebody is, is definitely looking for that savory, snackable, but still not making it too accessible that it's not considered gourmet or artisanal. There are options. Yeah, one, other the answer. Yeah. one other space I would um, throw out there for you, there's a growing segment in refrigerated snack bars that mm -hmm. has like yogurt bars and others that... Um, potentially could be an interesting fit too. But I would say, yeah, definitely learn your way there. But I think it'll be, as you think about place and distribution, an interesting question to solve. Yeah, it's definitely a good problem to solve is that the product doesn't exist. And there are definitely places in retail and markets where it can be placed well. We just will need to figure out exactly where that should be. So Bob, let's, let's turn to you. So Allison, again, great job. I really like the product and my question is around shelf life. Do you know what the shelf life is today? And when you get towards the end of that shelf life, do you start to have moisture migration issues with the nuts getting soggier or, or taking on some of the moisture from the cheese? So, so Bob, I've, I've been having a lovely time going to entrepreneur school with you and uh, CMAB the last six weeks. So I learned a lot about water activity and cheese. Um, when I pitched this idea to my kitchen scientists, um, I thought they were going to fire me, even though I was trying to hire them, because they said this product doesn't exist and it can't exist. And the good news is six weeks later, we actually have made it and it's something we're proud of. As far as shelf life, we do need to do continued testing. We're obviously at the food scientist sort um, part of our process. I've had extensive conversations with Cal Poly, the creamery, and their pilot labs. So our next step is going to work with them on that commercialization so we can come up with a formulation to increase shelf life. I'm still eating samples we've been creating that are a month or you know month old, but um, definitely we need to do that. Um, and we're full in with Cal Poly going to utilize their services as we formulate that product. Great, thanks. So yes, water activity is a concern. I'm a biochemist, but learned a lot about cheese. <laughs> Moisture migration, who knew? Um, so Nikki, let, let me turn it over to you. 
Yeah, thanks, Bob. That was also what I was <laughs> going to go down that route around how to keep the pistachios crunchy um, for a longer period of time. I think that would be my my biggest feedback. You've done an amazing job, Alison. I think it's a very unique proposition. I think you know everyone knows about a protein bar or a snack bar, and out there that no one's really doing that cheese bar scenario go um, snacking occasion for adults, millennials, those that have got a discerning taste that want something. They want to have their cake and eat it to have something which, which should be on a cheese board, but they want to have it on the go. So I think it's absolutely brilliant fit. And in terms of uniqueness, I remember searching, I searched our database within our AG platform and there's, there's nothing else really like that that exists in the market. So you've done an awesome job. Um, yeah, I think the, the moisture thing is definitely on my mind, but if you, how do you think, how, how are you thinking about line extensions as you go beyond, you know, as you get gain distribution and you want to get critical mass on shelf and have that ring, how are you, like, what are your thoughts and how are you going to expand um, the assortment and, and, the, and the variance within that? That's where I'm really excited you asked me that question because we are already excited about line extension, even though I just learned about water activity. Um, so the line extension, we have some wonderful flavor profiles. I did put it in the cell sheet within the package, um, looking really for global and dimensional uh, flavors. So we're working with different types of cheese as well. Um, we're experimenting with this wonderful queso fresco with a mili, uh, mango chili lime salsa with a little pepitas. So each bar will definitely spice is going to be a big key of it, making it really about a flavor experience. Of course, you have your tomato, basil, almonds, sun, you know, um, but looking at different cheeses, always having the spice. So as a flavor profile in that extension, looking to also do a party trays and sample packs that you could actually just bring these to a part like to a dinner party. Because also when we look at in this pandemic and people are more concerned about health and sanitation, if you could extend this line to something you could bring to a party, but everyone isn't sharing the same cheese board, that's a really mm -hmm. good opportunity as well as to be sold on airplanes or served in first class where you're still eating a high-end artisanal food, but it's clean and safe. Um, and I think that'll be incredible. I think the line extensions are endless. If you came in and visited my cheese tasting, which I didn't know that was a thing, you'd be excited. <laughs> awesome, well done. All right, Bentley, we've got, we've got 30 seconds left on the clock. All right. All right, so I'll make it quick, but uh, I, won't, I won't maybe repeat what these guys have said. I would say it's, super super uh interesting in the sense of it's it's what i like to say it's brick to forehead which is always a good thing right it's um really really easy from a proposition perspective um i also was going to ask you about line extensions i guess maybe what i would say is have you played with any different alternate formats that you think would uh, unlock what i would say is completely new distribution or usage opportunities so we talked about party platters and those kind of things which i would say is more of a pure line extension, if you will. But uh, I loved how you were starting to think about totally different uh, opportunities to get this product out there. And I was wondering whether there, there's other formats you're playing with. Maybe it's early days. Definitely. Um, I, I will tell you, I do, when I have American Airlines and AEG, which owns a bunch of sporting arenas and Coachella, for instance, I mean, these are, are ways that you can extend into broader base of consumers. And looking also into just the plain line extension, um, playing around in different cheeses right now this is a very fresh cheese just due to our time constraints but we could also look at aged cheeses and other ways to infuse ingredients which also could increase this shelf life cool good stuff i was trying awesome. to talk really fast for you fred yeah yeah Thanks, Bentley. Allison, that, was, that was great you're, you're gonna host the next one of these <laughs> that was a great job so thank you everyone um so that that concludes the pitch section session excuse me now our judges are going to go and submit their votes based on uniqueness, taste, viability, and the founder team. Um, what we'd love to know from you that are watching is, did you have a favorite company? Is there one of these that you think jumps out in front? If so, just go on social media, wherever, wherever you social media these days, whether that's LinkedIn or Instagram or, or Facebook, uh, Twitter, and, and just write in the company that you think should win. We'll make sure we amplify it and we'll also invite you to come to the finals uh, after you do that. Uh, as the judges vote, and we're gonna go really as quickly as we can with that, because I know we're running a minute behind. Um, as the judges vote, we're gonna wanna share with you uh, a few really fun videos uh, from our friends at California Milk Advisory Board. So please enjoy this and we'll be back in just a minute.
These days, people are getting back to a simpler way of eating. Back to basics. We're returning to wholesome, natural food. The way our grandparents ate. It's not about chemically altered, overly processed food anymore. It's about real food. Dairy is at the heart of all of this. Milk and all the dairy products made from it, like butter, yogurt, ice cream, and cheese, provide protein and calcium to our families the natural way. Not only can you pronounce the ingredients, you can understand them and feel good about eating them. These days, our lives are busier than ever, and we often don't think about where our food comes from. Fact is, a lot of it originates in California, thanks to some of the most fertile farmland in the world and that warm California sunshine. It's no wonder we call it the Golden State. Some say the finest dairy products around start with milk, made right here in the land of milk and sunny. There are over 1,400 dairies in California, owned and operated by real people. Dairy families who love what they do and want you to love what you eat. For generations, California dairy farmers have dedicated their lives to caring for the cows who make the milk that goes into the dairy products we all love. These families have been making real food long before it became fashionable again. My name is Kirsten Arreyes, and I'm a real California dairy farmer. My family and I take great pride in what we do and in the foods that are made from our milk. We love knowing that families all over have the opportunity to eat the same real food that our family enjoys. Families that are probably a lot like yours. Return to real. Look for the seal. You will enter the Golden State with creamy California ice cream. The delicious taste cradles you like a mama bear coming home to her cub after weeks away at a work seminar in Kansas City. Now hibernate, baby bear, with dreams of rich ice cream. What's next? Whatever it is, it's coming at us faster every day from every corner of the globe. What's next isn't where it used to be. It's everywhere else, and it's relentless. Some companies think what's next only happens through R&D or acquisitions. For them, what's next might be fatal. The most innovative companies are partnering with startups to do more with less, to hack problems, and to unlock growth. The most innovative companies turn to venture fuel to solve their corporate challenges with innovative solutions. Our global innovation network includes over 500 leading venture capitalists, universities, accelerators, and angel investors. Heck, even our scouts have scouts, which is why at any given time, we have eyes on up to 2 million vetted startups around the world. But you don't care about 2 million startups. You care about the ones that can solve your problem, which is why we don't give you lists. We deliver custom vetted solutions. So whether you want to transform innovation across your company, or solve an immediate challenge with tangible results, or simply discover what's possible, Venture Fuel helps you inject innovation to stay ahead of the pace of change. What's next? What's next is now. You will enter the golden state with mouth-watering California cheddar. The robust flavor sends a tingle all over your body. A tingle that can only be described in one word. Tingly. This is my first year farming on my own. I get up a little bit earlier than sunrise and try to get my stuff done. I'm teaching Logan everything that, that I know how to do. He's learning to do all these things that a lot of kids at this age maybe don't care about. I'd rather be on a tractor than inside playing video games. It's exciting. The dairy business went from my dad to me and hopefully someday to him. I think he'll be successful at it.
enter the golden state with luscious California butter on toast. The rich butter is so comforting. It's like being wrapped in a thousand warm blankets. Yet, you won't be too hot because they're really thin blankets whose cumulative effect is that of one standard blanket. Mm. This is the time we've all been waiting for. First, our friends at consumer research disruptor Perksy have shown the same commercials that you all saw for each of these finalists uh, to 500 different consumers and asked them to rank what they would put in their shopping basket. And that came up with our fan vote, which is part of our overall vote for tonight. But we wanted to share with you who the fans thought was the top company. So let's first go and, and take a look at the fan vote. Cheeseboard with Allison, who just, just pitched there at the end, uh, was actually the fan favorite. We've now taken that information, we've tabulated it with our esteemed judges that you met, uh, and now we're gonna see who's gonna advance to the finals. Uh, this is really exciting. Can I get a cowbell, please? And the winner is, How's that for some drama? And the winner is... <laughs> it is Tarush uh, from Sack Foods, which is the organic flavored paneer. Uh, so Tarush, why don't, why don't we bring you back in? Uh, congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. We're so excited to be here, and uh, thank you for your votes. And uh, yeah, we're very grateful. Thank you. Oh, that's not that's not fair. You've got the adorable, adorable child on the, the screen. <laughs> Don't get all the votes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so, so Tarush, had... what was it? What, what 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 do you think it was about your product that uh, made a difference here to propel you onto the finals? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are a couple of things. One is, uh, I think we made a very delicious tasting product. Consumers have really liked it. And, uh, you know, I think it's extremely innovative. It's never been done before. So I think that there's the, the angle about that. And I think the scale potential, I, I think that's been, that's that's tremendous. It's, we're looking at a long-term view and it's a very disruptive product. There are a lot of derivative products that can be made out of paneer. And I guess the other thing is just the traction that we've gotten uh, so far in a short amount of time. And that would be thanks to everyone, every every store that's helped us get our product in the shelves and taken a bet on us. We could not have been there without without their support. So we're very, very grateful. Well, congratulations. Uh, we're excited to have you at the finals next week. Uh, so send more paneer this way. <laughs> For sure. Great. And I'm gonna bring in Bob Carroll uh, from CMAB. So. Bob, this is uh, this is our second year doing this. Uh, we've 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 tasted a lot of products together. We've seen a lot of founders. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> what do you think it was about Tarush and and the team and the product that uh, separated them from this very competitive field? Yeah, well, thanks. First of all, I'd like to thank, on behalf of the California Dairy Farmers and the CMAB, all of the contestants, all the finalists, and all of the amazing work and great products that you've created. I think really what set what separated Tarush and his his products in the field was just that ability to to innovate around an area that can extend an existing product into something that's bigger. So that's that viability is proven. The scale is certainly possible, and and really with a great product that just tasted fantastic. And uh, we're we're very excited to see the finals next week and and see how the next phase of this progresses. I love it. Well, thanks, Bob, and and thanks to everybody uh, for for tuning in. Uh, a, a special thank you to Shira at Averbush on on my team, uh, who's been spearheading this entire program, done a heck of a job. Uh, so thank you to Shira. I also want to thank all of our contestants, our mentors, uh, and if we could bring the judges back uh, on screen. Uh, we really appreciate all of your time and insights. Uh, I know it was really helpful to each of the founders, uh, as well as very entertaining for all of us. So for anybody watching, please feel free to stick around. Uh, right after this, we're going to go into the, the final semifinals, uh, which will be on the same channel. So you can just stay live and, and hang out with us for a minute. 
Uh, and and if you if you need to go, uh, we'd also love for you to join us uh, at the finals, which will be next week, Thursday, November nineteenth. Um, and if you want, just shoot a note uh, to Snack Accelerator hashtag Snack Accelerator on any of the social channels uh, with with your name or a picture or a company or whatever word you want, uh, and we'll send you a link back uh, to the invite to those finals. So thanks again to everybody from the California dairy community. Uh, happy Veterans Day, everybody, and have a great night.